here for the demonstrations every week since it takes place right in front of the building that our station is located. But it wasn't as packed as it is today. It's probably uh, because today's gathering takes place amid an escalating feud between Seoul and Tokyo over Japan's export restrictions following South Korean court rulings demanding Japanese companies to compensate for wartime forced labor. Protests demanding the Japanese government a formal apology and reparations have been taking place every Wednesday for the past 27 years. It first started in 1992, so today's gathering is the 1400th, and it's listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the world's longest-running protest on a single theme. Now, what's making today's rally all the more meaningful is because it's taking place on August 14th, which is Memorial Day for Japanese forces, comfort women victims, and a day ahead of Liberation Day, which celebrates the end of Japanese colonial rule of Korea. Why has August 14th been designated as a day to commemorate the former comfort woman? It was in 1991, on this very day, that late sex slave victim Kim ak sun publicly testified about her traumatic experience for the first time ever. This bronze girl statue symbolizing the victims of Japan's wartime sex slavery was erected in front of the Japanese embassy in 2011, marking the 100th rally. An agreement was reached in 2015 with Japan's Abe administration and the South Korean government of impeached former President Park Geun-hye. Under the deal, Tokyo agreed to contribute some $9 million to set up a foundation to compensate the victims and their families. But what was missing in that agreement was a sincere apology from the Japanese Prime Minister himself and a declaration of legal responsibility on Japan's part. It didn't reflect the voices of the victims, and hence they refused to accept the deal. Japan continues to reject repeated calls by South Koreans to make a sincere apology, take legal responsibility, and properly compensate the female victims, claiming that the issue was settled in a 1965 treaty when the two countries normalized ties. Marking the occasion, President Moon Jae-in wrote on his Facebook account that he would do his best to restore the dignity and honor of the victims and step up efforts to enhance international awareness of the issue. The unveiling ceremony of a new memorial statue that also represents the comfort women is currently taking place at Namsan Mountain. It's been donated by a nonprofit organization based in California, the Chin Duck and Kangshik Kim Foundation, marking the 100th anniversary of the Samin or March 1st movement and the establishment of the provisional government of Korea. What's worth taking note of is that the new statue stands near the former site of a Japanese imperial shrine on Namsan Mountain. Namsan, which is located in the center of the capital, was geographically and strategically important for any dynasty in Korean history. So that's why the Japanese imperialists established this massive shrine after colonizing Korea. It's a bit different from the girl statue that we're more familiar with, like the one in from the Japanese embassy. It's a life-size statue of three girls, each from Korea, China, and the Philippines, with their backs turned and holding hands, and late Kim ak sun looking at them. Now, the gravel beneath Kim ak sun's feet uh, represents the path of pain and grief that she had to walk throughout her life. They say it's actually similar to the one erected in San Francisco in 2017. The difference between the two is that the San Francisco one has the girls all holding hands together, while the tall one leaves room for visitors and citizens to join hands with them. The Jindok and Gyeongshik Kim Foundation aims to install memorial statues in 13 countries to send a message to the world that it's not just Korea that suffered from Japan's atrocities, but many other countries across the region and the world. And that the comfort woman issue is a women's rights issue and more broadly, a human rights issue that needs to be addressed and resolved. Time is running out for these elderly victims. A number of former comfort women registered with the South Korean government that are still alive stands at only 20. 
Historians estimate that up to 200,000 women, mostly from Korea, were forced to serve in the Japanese military brothels before and during World War II. The surviving victims, the living witnesses, are over 90 years old, which underscores the urgency of solving this issue once and for all.